but life is so short that you can't waste even a day subscribing to what someone thinks you can do versus knowing what you can do. You guys are born at a very awesome, distinct time. Like, I think that this is the renaissance. Don't get sort of trapped into like this, everything sucks, the world is like coming to an end. That's just like an internal mechanism basically to chill. The name of the brand should equally tie back into the brand, what it means. Or it doesn't have to, but you should be able to in one sentence get someone's brain to go, aha, I get it, you know? And then the typeface, like how, what's your logo look like? What's the label look like? What, what would the garment be? What is, what's the color of the brand? You know, all these sorts of things make great brand architecture. Of course, you can not have them, but if you look at, say, Rick Owens, right? You can feel the typeface, you know the label, you know the hang tag, and you know the store, and you know that the music in the store, what it would take to feel like. You know, Samuel has that with a cold wall, like the sound, you can hear the sound, you can see the, the wax label. I know the typography because it's been, it's linked to that manifesto and it's linked to his, his premise. That is great brand architecture that sets you up to win as you're, you know, as you're building brand equity. And it's things that I've had to learn. I basically work at a feverish pace in a self-serving way just to find my signature. Like, what's my DNA? Every architect, designer, artist that I look up to, you know, whether they were doing period paintings or buildings in their early career to the end of their career, there's basically a through line. So what I would challenge you in your work, no matter what, is go back. You know, go back to when you were like, that your earliest memories or the way that you thought to organize something, the way you thought to organize your closet or what colors were your favorite. Back in that sort of like early rationale before you sort of learned too much, that's when your DNA started. My word of advice is you have to, I think the landscape is different even today versus when I signed three years ago. And I feel like what made me put me in position to be is I was like off-white was my resume. It was a business plan. It was the way that I carried myself. It was the way that I organized my shows. And basically I would look at every season to be like, this is what, if I were at a house, this is what you guys should be doing. And I'll tell you that works a hundred percent of the time. Because when you see a young designer fostering a community building an identity, uh, selling, and moving in a chic and respectable way, when they're looking to put a new position, they're gonna be like, wait a second, this, this person has been, instead of in a meeting, you're showing your, your scenario. Like I'm designing this uh, candle, right? Or like the student or the classroom is this. like. If I put this candle in an all white gallery space, it looks like a piece of art. If I put it on like in a garage, it looks like a piece of trash. You know, like someone would throw it, throw it away. It's dented. And I think I often use this analogy in design. I could either design the candle and spend a lot of time like telling you about the candle, or I could just design the room and, that it sits in. You know, it's under, I, I spend a tremendous amount of time educating and absorbing and traveling and being a part of contemporary culture like this work that we do we can't do from afar it takes strong opinions you know it takes a discerning eye and so uh, as a student read the room you know look at your work and then look at your contemporaries your people in your classroom look at people in professional practice and challenge yourself to ask the hard questions like what makes it different and first rate is just the work itself like a shoe a sneaker a painting the level that I encourage young students to operate is to crumple up all the work and throw it in the trash 
Like, what's the actual idea? Why does it have to exist? And if you can answer, you know, those sorts of, like, tear up questions, all of a sudden, anything you think of falls into this, this relevant um, bucket, and things start to synergize in a different way, and I think that's the one thing I encourage most with, like, younger, young thinking is, like, these industries we're in, they're kind of glamorous, they're fun. You could just look at the end result, be inspired, and make a version of it. And what the show is about is trying to sort of, within the chaos, is present the rationale alongside the different artifacts. Response to campaigns and images and all that, like we know what that looks like. You know, I think that the future of fashion, like fashion's only defined by 20%. I think the rest of the 80% is, is when we really, um, when we really embrace and celebrate like what's happening in, uh, you know, the Middle East and Asia and Africa, but it, you ha it has to be in a way that we haven't seen in the past. It was the same as on this one. There's another Jim Joe Air Force One, one of one art piece. Uh, is my friend basically who inspires me. So I have mentors that are like dead. <laughs> I have mentors that are 30 years older than me, but I have mentors that are like 10 years younger than me. And he's the friend of mine that sort of gave me the sort of nudge to just like write on things and sort of like don't be precious. And I think this embodies that to it. He like grabbed it and then just gave this back to me. And I was like, this is from Dover Street. He just took it off the shelf and like drew it and then put it back. And I was like, this is why I make stuff. You know, it's to sort of spark an idea. Like, I'll pass these around so you can guys like steal them and I'll find you for sure. <laughs> Kid with the og hat. Um, but I think it's important not to be precious. That's what this whole thing is. Like Nike, another dream project for me. And I was like, I have to hit this out of the park. And all the architecture kids can sort of catch a vibe. A lot of this is like model making. That's where the, this is at the same time that I came up with that whole putting sculpture on a bag. Where that was like just me finding sort of new space. And that's when I was like, you know, a shoe isn't a shoe to me. Like, I'm not approaching it as a shoe, and I think maybe that's why I found a little bit of, like, open space, is that I was just looking at it like an object. You can choose to wear it on your shoe, and that's kind of where sneaker culture had gone. Like, these just sit above, like, kids' beds, or they sit somewhere, you know, and I th they think they sit in boxes still, and I wanted to, like, feel like they were already used when you got them. They're still precious, but they seem like objects, so... It's like I have this brand off-white only to tell stories. Like I don't have it to do traditional fashion because I don't know that. You know, I started from that Pyrex, <laughs> like a hoodie <laughs> with a Caravaggio image, but it, like I would think and I promote, it's like I was never gonna be limited by hoodies and t-shirts, no matter how much it made sense. You can imagine how much advice that I had gotten. It's like, hey, just do that. And it's like, no, I want to draw a line between that and the opposite. And that's with the zigzag. So now I'm free to sort of like articulate stories. You also have to have mentors, like dead or alive. You have to sort of connect with some body of work or someone who formulated a thought and an aesthetic and then build yours upon that. What most people won't tell you is that the people that you look up to didn't invent it themselves. You know, everyone has this sort of like, uh, I call it like getting your brain <laughs> reprogrammed. Like once you sort of learn a thought process, you can actually see yourself in that and add to it. And so obviously I have a mentor, I have a sort of thought process and aesthetic that I love. But then once you learn the, the ethos of why, the aesthetic, why you love the aesthetic, you dig deeper and then you know how to turn the wheel left or right. So I have mentors that are like, dead. <laughs> I have mentors that are 30 years older than me, but I have mentors that are like 10 years younger than me. My friends, my community, I was like, I'm only going to put 50% 
of my effort into school, quote unquote school, and I'm going to raise my interest up 50% to actively treat them equal. That's when I started DJing. That's why hip hop and music. I was like, that's not low. That's not what I do outside of school. That's what I do. That's what I'm into, skateboarding. And literally to get to where I'm at today, if I hadn't spent so much time on that other 50%, being curious about art and learning things that weren't on my curriculum, I wouldn't sit before you today. There was a farmer's market that my roommate and I, we were getting, like we weren't eating fast food. He was like, I want to be a chef. And I was like, you're my roommate, let's do this. So my classroom just kept getting bigger. You know, that's why I travel. That's why I don't see a limit between Paris and Chicago. It's like, I live here, but no, that's, that's not, there's no limit. And I think that young people, I know it's hard, it's lofty goals to be like, don't believe in, abolish the stereotype and don't believe the box that they put you in. But life is so short that you can't waste even a day subscribing to what someone thinks you can do versus knowing what you can do. And that's like the switch. It's, it's like the switch in your head is if you can get to a place where you can act on that in the next hour after we're done speaking, I guarantee you it's a domino effect. All, everything just starts like, sort of like, you know, obliterating itself away. You guys are born at a very awesome, distinct time. Like, I think that this is the renaissance. Don't get sort of trapped into like this, everything sucks, the world is like coming to an end. That's just like an internal mechanism basically to chill. You know, because I don't believe in skipping steps. And I, you know, like if you want to, be in museums, you should be finding someone who works here and like begging to be their mentor. You know, you, the idea is to work hard, do the 10,000 hours. And I think people think working hard is like thinking hard. You know, I mean like actually working hard, yeah. you know, like <laughs> in like you can imagine what my output is, how much, how much, how many hours I spend you know, when I got here, uh, who's it, Erin, is she around? Was like, no, she ran away. But she was like, how can you have a conversation and be on your phone at the same time? And it's like, you know, that's what got me here, <laughs> is literally doing two things at the same time. And I, I get that the whole world shouldn't do that, like work at the pace, but find something that you're die hard and passionate about, not something that you do nine to five and then you're like, oh, I'm tired, I'm gonna go get dinner with my friends. You know, like that's more important. It's like anyone's name that you can reference, Warhol, Lagerfeld, Mark Jacobs, Steve Jobs. The reason why those one word names reference a whole body of work is that they tirelessly like put, their whole dedicated their life to that, Duchamp. You know, like these are, these are people that have, you don't have to do that. That's just the path that I'm on. Whatever is happening culturally, you know, you talked about just the carnivals that have happening for 300 years and that sort of synergy that exists on that specific day that exists within that sort of context. And obviously carnival in UK and Notting Hill means something completely different, but your perspective on it through all the hours that you spend on a saxophone or a clarinet, you know, boiling down to some words that leave less sort of ambiguity. Mm. And it falls in the same, you know, every friend that I find along my travels, along my lifetime that I believe is giving valuable information, A, I encourage them to produce work. You know, mm. too, too often there's the, there's in contemporary society, there's this sort of this knowledge build up and then there's this like, uh, fear of executing or putting it out or putting mm -hmm. it out in abundance, especially within black youth, black production is in just in general, it doesn't matter the race. It's, it's a, there's, there's too many critics <laughs> yeah. and not enough creators. This was my domino effect. I was just really into Caravaggio, like to the point where it, me as a creative person didn't realize you could invent. And that's what, you know, this painting represents to me. It's, 
Honestly, I just put this up here to have it up at Harvard and someday. <laughs> just trying to make this long-winded vibe. But this is like my domino effect. Like, I hadn't ever overthought it. Do you know what I mean? I just made this video, screen printed some shirts, and gave them to friends. And then that's literally why I'm standing here. A random sweatshirt and a photo from a book that I liked. And basically it's a two-line poem on the back that sort of reads like a jersey. And it, it was like it's super uh, seminal for me and I think it's important if you, amongst all your studies, amongst like your nine to five, all these kids like tuning in on live stream or whatever, like if you just force yourself to do the one project that you believe in and then it exists, that's gonna be the one that's gonna like lead you on your career, not necessarily the practical ones. So that's just a showcase of what, you know, I believe that everyone should do. When it comes to self-expression, especially in a creative atmosphere, those things that hold you back from sort of executing on your dream are myths. It's in here, right? It's in your head. There's actually no consequence. And that's, you know, it took me that sort of period to like question myself and be like, am I going to believe in the myth that I can't be a designer on a mm. on the highest level? Am I going to believe that I'm supposed to make printed t-shirts that are called streetwear or am I supposed to believe that I'm only going to DJ clubs that are willing to pay me whatever and to play whenever and I was like yeah I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep doing it for a long period of time till the one opportunity that comes across say yes or no and I'm going to say yes I'm going to show up on time yep. I'm going to do my best and then that's going to lead to some other opportunities and I hope that through my narrative, people see that in themselves, that anything is achievable and there's different genres are just made to be jumped over. Legitimately, nothing in the world is more valuable than conversation and mm -hmm. that, it's, that it's archived, Yeah, you know, that it doesn't float away, you know. Like that's why I'm gonna tell you to hit save on this video oh, yeah. afterwards, and I hit. I think I hit save. But, you know, we got it saved. But I think that these these aren't casual conversations. You know, mm. this is something that can hopefully like spur on change.